you released the Quo Live EP. And from what we can gather research wise, it was the first EP to chart since Beatles Magical Mystery Tour back in 67. Nice one. <laughs> um, it's only water. Why an, why an EP? What at that point in time made you think that that was worth resurrecting that particular format? Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Perhaps we didn't have enough material for um, an album, and uh, maybe sh sort of short, sharp shock, you know, little EP. But I, I, I guess as well at the time we thought, well, you know, we're big now. Maybe we can, maybe we can do anything. We can do what we want to do. Let's release an EP. Um, Cause it was a bit of a blast from the past, even then. Um, and I think it was a, a hit, yeah. And it was the first sort of EP that had gone in the charts for, I don't know, how many years or something. So whoever thought of it, it was a great idea, but I don't know who did and quite why we did it, but maybe it was for those reasons. Now then. <laughs> I want to get in the pool, for Christ's sake, come on. <laughs> and let's take you back to Vienna, airport, <laughs> Austria. And, uh, what John Coglan called the happiest day of his life, he said, because I decided to travel separately. Yeah. What actually happened that landed you for your prison? Well, we were talking to Rick Wakeman, and uh, we were having a laugh, because uh, he just happened to be at the airport at the same time. And uh, Rick was an old mate of mine, you know, we spent many time on the pub floors, a lot of time on pub floors together, me and Rick, you know. And that ran away, and we didn't have any luggage. Um, we didn't have any hand luggage. So we decided, because there was a fucking great queue, and we thought, well, well, we'll just go to the front of the queue. And of course we get down there and we said, look, we've got no, no luggage, Let, and they wouldn't have any of it. Get back to the, the back of the queue, you know. And uh, of course when we get up there then, we're not very popular with these guys. And uh, they're not a very nice bunch, you know, they were policemen and we didn't know that, they're, they're police officers. So one guy says to us, he says, come in here, you, I, I want to search you. And uh, I thought, oh no, he's taking Alan Lancaster in there, you know, and Alan could have a fight, you know, he was a hard boy, Alan. And all of a sudden, in those days, it was just like a cubicle type thing, you know, um, plastic walls. And uh, I see the place starting to bounce around a bit, you know, and he's obviously, you know, he's messing around with Nuff and searching him, and Nuff doesn't like it. So Nuff's hit him, hasn't he? Because he's, he's, uh, he's sort of messing about with him. I don't know what he was doing, but anyway, it all goes off. So Frame and me are behind enough so we run in right because we'd see well, what's going to happen and we, we're trying to we we didn't go for this guy we're just trying to break the fight up because enough is now fighting with this policeman next thing we know the curtain goes back and there's dogs machine guns right and how does it look you're in Austria three long-haired English blokes with one of their colleagues in a booth having a fight. <laughs> How does it look? Not good. We're carted off and we tried to tell them this story but of course they wouldn't have any of it, you know. He's claiming he's got a fractured skull, this guy and everything, you know, which he didn't have. But you you know, when you're versus the police in Austria, you're, you're not batting on a good wicket. Um, so they drove us off and uh, interrogated us um, all separately and then took us to prison, not jail, prison. Went through the big doors, you know, uh, the initial big gates and then in. And I seem to remember four or five doors being locked behind me. Uh, you strip naked and uh, you're given a blanket. I didn't know when I was going get, to get my clothes back, but I took uh, necklaces, rings, everything off. And I don't know what had happened to Francis and Alan. I didn't, didn't, presumably the same as what had happened to me, you know. And I'm shoved in this cell with this guy who's uh, an armed bank robber, it turned out. He was a nice bloke, actually. He was well all right. 
and uh, I got my clothes back uh, the following morning and sat there and thought well what the fuck is going to happen to us now I'm in prison I did manage to get to sleep that night and I should always remember this I woke up the following morning and and there was this you know this little window that you have high up in a prison cell and I thought literally this is a dream and you know most dreams you wake up from and you think god oh, thank god for that I thought I was in prison and I was I woke up and it was real so I sat there for a few hours oh yeah we were taken out and we we're given a shower and given a half a loaf of bread right take back to your cell and get back get banged up again you know there we are in the cell and I didn't know what was going to happen anyway the, the the radio comes on once an hour for the news in the cells they just get five minutes radio and uh, I hear status quo and I said to this bloke I was in with I said what's he saying he said he said uh, oh, blah 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 you've got bail you're gonna be released because it was on the news that status quo had been put in prison you know he said you're gonna be released today I said oh we are so anyway Cut long story short, as Mike Arano would say. Um, long story short, we get out on £3,000 bail each. Um, fly home. I remember the first thing we wanted when we got the airport was an ice cream. You know, eat an ice cream. Lovely. Free. Well, partly free. And then we had to come back six months later for the trial. And uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Um, the bloke actually, we couldn't understand what was going on. Um, and I took my my wife at the time, I took her with me because she was German, she understood and I saw her head go like that and I thought, God, what's he saying? He's put a black hat on this guy. <laughs> We're going to be hung. And uh, it, uh, it, it came out that we were, um, uh, that we were guilty and we could spend uh, three months in prison Nuff got four months, and uh, then he sat there, and I thought, God, I'm going back to that prison for three months. And he sat there, and out under his black cloak, he pulled out a, a calculator. Sat there tapping away, I don't know what's going on here? And um, he said, oh, you can pay a fine. <coughs> a fine? <laughs> Let's pay that fine. So it's 3,000 3, quid, something. that was a lot of money at the time. But, uh, and, and that was the end of the whole saga, but it was a very, uh, a very nasty experience that was.